to Ian. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, thank you for that uh, introduction. So yeah, the crowd turned out to be a bit more than I expected. <laughs> because I was just expecting around uh, less than 10 since it's late in the afternoon. And I think every one of you is already tired with the whole and uh, your brain is also somehow exhausted with all this information. But uh, please bear with me. So this would just be a very quick one. So I tried not to be really too technical about this so everyone can uh, relate on what we, I would be talking about. So everyone here, uh, who here is a WordPress uh, developer? Developer. Okay, designers. Bloggers. How about the others? What are you doing relate when it comes to WordPress? Uh, is, there a, is there a marketing uh, person here or a project manager? Okay, so so much for that. Let's start. So just a quick background on myself. So yeah, I'm Ian. So those logos you see are most of my affiliates in Philippines. So the one with the biggest one, the WordPress with the uh, they call this Sunray, so it's uh, our group in Manila. So we also used to conduct word camps like this. So then, uh, yeah, as aside from that, I'm also affiliated with other developer groups, but I'm most active with WordPress since WordPress is really my first love when it comes to development. So much for that. Let's start. So first things first. So have you ever heard about WordPress multi-site, or is it your first time to hear about about it? Okay, so how about, uh, are you familiar with multi-level marketing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so actually, it's, uh, the structure is somehow related to that, but unlike of having network of people, here we will, be have, we will be having networks of websites. So how is that possible with WordPress? So actually, this is uh, what we can, in case if we would uh, Let's go this, uh, compare it with the restaurants. Some restaurants have their so-called secret menu, right? That uh, is not displayed on their menu, and when you order it, you get something special. So this is what is somehow like WordPress is offering to us. It's their hidden gem, as what I see. Because when you install WordPress, when you download WordPress, this one doesn't come off the shelf. But literally, it's there in the shelf. You just need to get the book and read about it. So how does it work? So WordPress multi-site is a way of adding multiple sites to your WordPress installation. It's a feature that you can add either your existing or newly created website. So even though you have started your WordPress website already, so it's not the end of the world for you that, that you can't use this one, you can still use it, okay? So how does it work? So put it sim simply on this graphical information. WordPress have a team, have a user, have plugins, and then those things we try to centralize everything and distribute to different websites. But on the back end, we will not install. Example, if we have 10 sites under our multi site, we will not install WordPress 10 times. We will just install WordPress one time, and then you can now add multiple sites about it. So Aren't you amazed? Can we give a hand for WordPress for introducing that features? <laughs> okay, so let's go now to what are the difference between a single installed WordPress versus a multi-site? So first is, of course, when you say one versus multiple, so it, in terms of the number of sites, it's a big difference. Next is the user role. So you if you have uh, encountered using WordPress, so we think admin is the most powerful user because admin have the control of everything, the teams, the plugin, and everything. But if you use WordPress multi-site, there is a more powerful user that uh, is above the admin, which is we call network admin. But if you would read documentations, blog posts, or tutorials about uh, multi-site, sometimes they call it super admin <laughs> because as I mentioned, above admin, there is something more powerful. So don't be confused. Super admin, network admin, it's just the same. It depends on how the, the one who do the tutorial or the blog uh, call it. So next is access to teams and plugins. So 
As I mentioned, there is a network admin and there is a admin. So admin can still change the teams and plugins, but he cannot add his own plugins and teams. So the only one that can do that is the network admin. So later, you will, I will show you the difference between the backend of an ordinary WordPress versus a multi-site WordPress. Then you would see why I'm telling that the, we will remove the power of the admin to add their own teams and put it to the network admin. Next is, yeah, the admin screens. So there will be additional uh, menus, So, but don't be confused later. We'll try to compare each one side by side so you would see the difference. The next is the way the media and data is stored. So since we are having multiple sites, so it's not that one site, one database. So we would just add a new relation with the database. So uh, this might be too technical for you, but uh, put it in a way that the data would be sorted by web by a site ID. So when you call site one, so it would get all the information, blog posts, users, and everything for site one. Not, it would not get the posts for site two. Simple as that. Then the way the data is stored. So uh, if you some if you are somehow uh, mess around with the WordPress directories. So how does the uploads work? Uploads work like if you go to uh, uploads folder, so you would see random numbers. So the numbers represents the month. Then also there's a, before the month, there's a year. Then inside the year, the, the months in a room, uh, numerical representation, one for January, two for February, so on and so forth, until December for 12. In, uh, in multi-site, so how does it handle like that? So as I mentioned, there would be another folder which contains the site ID. So if the site ID is one, that's why I told you, you cannot see posts, images, or everything from site two if you're accessing website one because you're calling all the data for website one. So is that clear? Okay, so uh, just tell me if I'm going too fast so uh, I can slow down. <laughs> so, okay, so let's go deep into this one. So basically, this table is the roles of a uh, sales for, uh, I mean, uh, WordPress users. So the first is admin, editor, auditor, author, contributor, and subscriber. So you would see admin is really the most powerful user for a single installation of WordPress. You see, he can do everything, add, edit, delete, so on. But then when you introduce multi-site, so still the admin would get the same powers or same roles, but then we will just remove them, most of it, the add, like add for the teams and the uh, plugins. They cannot add their own teams and plugins. So it has a complete control of the entire network, meaning example, you want to create new site, so you would not go to your site admin, then hey, create me another website you need to go to the network or super admin. So he would be the one to process your request to create a new site. Then next is example, you want a new team on your site, you want a new plugin. So you also don't contact your website admin, you contact your network admin. Then next is this one. So let's say uh, on the multi-site, it's not really a one is to one basis. So the users can be one is to two or one is to many. So let's say uh, David is managing one of my websites in my network. I can also have him the admin of my website number two, three, so on, so forth. So with that, it would provide you flexibility. But in long run, if you would ask me, I would not uh, recommend it because uh, you know security issues and conflicts might arise if you allow a uh, one is to many uh, relation with your user to your websites under your network because uh, as I mentioned to you, there might be data inconsistencies. So if you would ask me, I would uh, recommend one is to one. But yeah, the network admin can give that privilege if you really, if, let's say uh, you have a client, he have five websites on you, so you want him to, he would uh, go to you, hey, I have admin one, admin two, admin three. I only want one admin for my five websites. So yeah, multi-sites can accommodate those kinds of Request. So then the rest, yeah, they can do everything. Okay. 
So next is how is the domain naming? So you would ask now for single WordPress, so we dedicate one domain or URL for them, right? So how about for multi-site? So how would I, uh, how would I name my websites? How would I give them domain name? So we have two ways of giving name for uh, multi-site. So first is the subdomain. So are you familiar with subdomain? So if you want to use this functionality, so on your cPanel, you just need to enable uh, the option to add wildcard subdomain so you can add unlimited subdomain. Then uh, the next one is if you don't want subdomains and you want like a subdirectory thing, it's also possible. So this is the default of a multi-site, so subdirectory. So let's say your uh, main site is www.example.com. Uh, <laughs> so you created a new site, so you named the site website one. So the uh, domain name would be www.example.com slash website one. So you would ask me, oh, how about you mentioned earlier, uh, you mentioned that uh, existing sites can be migrated to a multi-site network. So let's say you have a domain name like example2.com. You want to use that. <laughs> we don't want to use example.com slash website one. So later I'll show you some plugins that you can use for domain mapping. So this is just the default. So if you, if you want to create your own customized domain, it's also possible. So we'll tackle into that in a little bit. Okay, so since we have that, so now the next step is, should I use multi-site? So because uh, I mentioned it's not like, a, that's why WordPress uh, hide it. It's one of the reasons because multi-site is not for everybody. So it caters into some, uh, I can say, features or uh, technicalities needs to be considered. So it's best use when you're building a network of sites sharing the similar functionality. So when you say similar functionality, so a good example of that is WordPress.com. Who here has an account in WordPress.com? Anyone? You should try signing up after this. <laughs> so, okay, so WordPress.com is a great example of a multi-site. So, Later, after I have discussed everything, you try signing up with uh, WordPress.com, then you would see there all the things that I've been talking about. So aside from that, what are the other types that uh, you can uh, use a uh, multi-site setup? First is intranet. So let's say your, uh, for this, your HR wants to create like a uh, intranet where the use, where the Employee can uh, have their own profile, then file their leaves, file their attendance, and everything. They want to centralize everything. So, multi site is a great thing to start with. So, but I'm not really sure on big companies how will it work. But if for uh, startups and SME, if you want to implement your own uh, like HR management system, I think WordPress multi site would do the job for you. So, yeah, so here are some of the functionalities you can uh, utilize on how on how you can use uh, WordPress multi-site on a intranet setting. So next is personal sites. So uh, how of you here have your, their own websites? Anyone? So how many websites do you have? One only. One only. So many. <laughs> So it would be like a, it also for you if you have if you are maintaining multiple personal websites like if you have your own personal website then you have your blogging website you have a separate website for your hobbies or whatever so you can consolidate them to a one multi site so at least uh first you would save costs since the if you are hosting five sites so you can migrate all in one okay so next is for business sites. So uh, actually, uh, to give you a sh quick background, so since uh, the company I'm connected with, we have uh, three offices. The main HQ is on Singapore. The operations office is here in KL. And we have a newly branched out 
in Philippines in Dabao. So each entities should have their own corporate websites. So first, we used to uh, build for each entities or for each location, we used to build one WordPress for each one. <laughs> so then suddenly, uh, we noticed the design and everything is the same. The only difference is the footer, the address and uh, logo. So what we do now, we come up with a plan to migrate everything on a multi-site. So at least uh, it would be less, uh, it would be less hassle to, in, to update because that's the struggle we're finding now. So though it's not really a struggle, but somehow for us to work more efficient, let's say uh, we update the logo or we update something on About Us, we add a new milestone. So we want it to reflect on the three websites for Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, and Dabao. So now our content manager would update three instances of website with same information. Okay, so unlike if we have it centralized on a called this uh, multi-site, let's say we update something, the logo or a, a new uh, content, we can publish it once, then it would be applied to everyone. Okay, so next one is community networks. So <laughs> uh, if you are maintaining a community like a, not just really development community, like if you have a hobby community like for photographers, for uh, motorcycle or car enthusiasts. So if you want to start a network uh, or a website for your uh, community, you can start explore using multi-site. Then also uh, to add to this, I just forgot to put on the slides. You, if you also want to monetize, <laughs> so you can use uh, multi-site. So just to share with you the in my previous company, so it was used to be a uh, dealer of cars in Los Angeles. So, uh, you know, in US, when you purchase a car, it's not like that you just purchase the car, then you walk out the showroom with the car. So everything should be settled, the financing, the insurance, and everything. So what we do, so for the dealers to have less hassle for their customers, we provide the CRM that provides everything, the insurance and everything. But then the only thing that we are missing is the website. So most of the clients, the dealers in LA, they are getting a separate vendor for website. So now my uh, senior developer suggests we use WordPress multi-site because uh, we have a, like a package that if you avail package A, you get features A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. So uh, if you want to monetize like sell uh, websites, then uh, if you have, example, package A would have Plugins A, B, C activated. Plugin uh, package B would have additional plugins or teams uh, teams uh, activated. So that's the reason why it's been moderated by the network admin. Which team or plugins does the websites will use? So at least you can centralize everything. So is that cool? So okay, we go now to judge the pros and cons. So. I'm just gonna skip this because it's kind of redundant to what I said. Okay, so pros. So all manage all websites at same dashboard through single super admin. So that's why I said centralizing it to avoid conflicts and uh, keeping things in control and order. Then uh, you need to install Teams and plugin only once because as I mentioned, you can control whether to activate for it for the entire network or just for specific websites. The next is storing all the data in one backup since the database is just also centralized together with the files. Then next is don't spend so much on resources because uh, you know some of the hosting providers, they like, oh, yeah, I just give you 10 domains, I just give you this kind of, uh, you can just build five websites on it. So this, you just build one website, then deploy to everything. Then uh, the next is, uh, Oops, I think it is a cons, <laughs> so I put it here. So optimization can be less, ah yeah, sorry, sorry. Optimization can be less painful since, uh, you know, the this is related to the topic earlier. So this is a big concern. If you allow them to upload their own teams, they might get back to you that, hey, why did my site became slow? Then they would blame your hosting. Why you put me on that hosting? Because that hosting, when they started a few months ago, it's okay, but now it's not good. It's because they uploaded, uh, 
bloated team or plugin. So here, at least you have control. You would not deploy a bloated or uh, not good team or plugin if you know that it's not good for your network. The next is properly configure and maintain multi-language versions of the same site. So if you are using uh, or supporting multi-language, so this is also good because you update on one, then apply to everything. So that's the pros. So now, what are the cons? So first thing is if you are a plug-in dependent, so this might not be a sound as a good uh, suggestion for you since not really all plugins in the uh, in the repository of WordPress supports uh, multi-site. So, but the basic ones, based on my experience, it works. Like sample the contact form seven, those really basic plugins. But those complex one we haven't tried yet. So it's for your risk to take it. <laughs> so next is individual site administrator cannot install and install plugin or team. So uh, let's, that's what I told you. If uh, they want to install a new Teams, they would contact you to upload it to the network. So unlike, oh, just do it yourself. <laughs> so next is this one, a uh, big issue, security. So since the data and the files are stored in one centralized manner, so once there was a data breach or attack, expect that since it's a network, all would be affected. Then next is the big traffic on one site may affect the site, the speed of all other networks. So this one, uh, let's say if the uh, first web website one is consuming all the bandwidth, so it's not uh, good for the other sites, then also hosting plans, most of them do not allow uh, multi-site because it cuts their uh, cuts their revenue <laughs> since uh, instead of just allowing you to get three five sites you just purchase the basic one then deploy many sites so next is as I mentioned when your network is growing you're having hard time keeping an eye with everyone okay so now let me do a quick uh, showcase on how we can uh, how you would enable a uh, WordPress uh, uh, installation um, multi-site so it's just a very easy one so let's so everyone is here familiar with installation of WordPress so let's install WordPress first okay Okay, so don't use this. Uh, I'm just using this for demonstration purpose. So don't use this very, uh, very weak uh, password. Okay, so now let's log into our backend. Okay, so now here is our WordPress backend. So how we gonna, is there something here that they hide where we can, uh, activate our multi-site so the first thing is you need to do some uh, really not really that too hardcore coding but a very basic one so you open the wp config of your website and then just copy this single line of code put it below the wp debug so let me zoom zoom in for the benefit of the one in the back. So multi-site, define multi-site value true. So by default, it's false. That's why it's not uh, working. So let's save it. Then let's see. Oh, what happened? <laughs> mm. Wait, uh. let me do some magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, ju just to uh, quickly show, so this one, so define, allow multi-site. So once you've done it, so let's go back, let's put the 
previous settings first. Okay, so let's check our WordPress backend. So under these tools, you would uh, see a new menu, which is network, and then it would uh, provide you with the step-to-step -step progress on how you uh, can set up your uh, WordPress multi-site. So basically, it would provide you with these two set of codes. So first code is for your WP config. So aside from multi-site, it would have you paste this code from uh, WordPress. So let's just go quickly. So subdomain install, which means false. So if you set it false, the domain name would be on subdirectory. But if it's true, it would use subdomain. Then everything, leave it as is. Then after that, update the HT access with this one. So this is also provided on the WordPress backend once you enable the multi-site. So I'm not really sure what's this. <laughs> so, but uh, as usually, uh, this one is basically for the mapping of the contents. Since I mentioned to you that uh, images that being upload have will have now a prefix of uh, instead of going to double p content slash upload 2019 slash 10 uh, slash 10 slash image dot jpeg. It would append a site ID, meaning if the site ID is one. The images under that folder belongs to site one, so it's more on the permalink structures. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, Ian, very sorry, but we have to cut short your presentation uh, because we are already going to start the, the closing ceremony. So I want to thank Ian for taking time to put together a presentation. Uh, apologies to have to rush you. And